guys. Welcome back, Rita. I'm so happy to see you. Um, so, Rita, you were here last week and it's the same webinar, but I'm gonna go over it real quickly. I, I can't hear you. Unmute yourself. I can I can't hear you, Rita. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. So I know you were here and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it real quick and I'll have a little more time for questions and answers so that, you know, so that we can use the time for whatever you guys really need. And sure, no, that's fine. I thought it was the same webinar, but then I said, you know, I, I'm, I don't have nothing going on tonight. I'll just uh, log in and listen to you some more. <laughs> well, I'm happy to have you here. I'm happy yes, I do enjoy listening to you. Awesome. Okay, so let me start sharing. Hi, Argita. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. I'm going to go over the things that you already know about real quick, and then we'll get right into it. Okay, so today is about what to do when you feel stuck. And I am going to show you how to become unfazed by external circumstances. So regardless of what you're going through, you're going to have the inner strength and the inner wisdom to deal with whatever comes your way. Turn off all distractions so that we can make the most out of it. I'll try to be quick today so that we have a little more time for questions and answers, but I won't leave until I listen to all your questions. You are in the right place if you are grieving or you feel stuck, if you don't know what to do if you want to be happy again. And regardless of why you're here, I am super happy to have you. I think mo I think all of you have seen, seen my video. Um, can you send me in the chat if you want me to replay it? So why me? I, you know, I, I have the clinical education, but I also have the experience of pain. And I think it's, it's a beautiful combo to be able to empathize and understand what you go through, but also be able to provide you with the clinical expertise that helps guide you as well. Um, I usually present here my story, like the video. Olguita, have you seen this video? I think so, right? No? I believe, yes, I did. Yes. Right, right. Bueno, Olguita hasn't seen this, so I'm going to play it again. Couple minutes. My house was seriously a fairy tale. We're about to start construction in the backyard and we wanted to enjoy the pool one last time with our family and friends. And at some point, my friend asks me, Where's Fluffy? And when I looked down, I saw her red polka dot mini bathing suit. And at some point I'm looking at my husband and he was like, oh, Fofi, come on, Fofi, you're strong, Fofi. You got this, mamita, let's, let's go watch movies after here. You know, you got this. I found myself falling on my knees by the stretch, singing a song to myself. And to me, that was like, okay, it's not gonna happen. She wasn't gonna be saved the way I wanted her to be saved. Are we ever going to be happy again? Like, is it possible to be happy again? Yeah. 
the priest said those that were happy again chose to honor their children or their lost one through service, through love, acts of kindness and gratitude. And I want to honor my daughter. So everything that I do is to honor her. I learned through that experience that just because I went through this, it would make people feel more understood. And they would feel hopeful because if you went through this and you can smile and you can experience joy, then I can too. So everything I do really is for my little angel. She wakes me up at four these days to write and it puts me to, puts me to sleep past midnight, also writing for her and for you guys. I'm trying to share the hope that she's brought into my life. I, I have been able to go from the pain of loss to experience the joy among my surviving family and and I want to help others be able to do the same. I want to I want to be able to help you rise above adversity and overcome the pain that you've experienced. So, can you imagine what it will feel like to feel at peace regardless of the circumstances? And that's what we're going to talk about today. No matter how great the pain, you don't have to suffer. And there's a difference between suffering and feeling pain. Pain, pain is the path to, to healing. Suffering is, is pain without hope, pain, like wasted pain. Or, or like, like when, we, when we decide that pain is going to be our final destination rather than the tool to, to achieve healing. So you have the power to, to tap into your inner wisdom and go from being stuck to elevated. And what does it mean to be stuck? It means to be, to feel paralyzed or lost. It's dwelling on the painful past or worrying about the uncertain future. It's having no control over circumstances. So maybe, maybe you don't know what, what you're supposed to do next or, and, and you're, you're scared of what will happen in the future or you're worried about never being able to overcome the past and and, and, and you feel like no matter what you do and how much you try, everything is falling apart and you have no control over it. And if that's what stuck is, then these are the things that you need. You need guidance so that you can stop feeling lost. You need to live in the present moment so that you stop dwelling on the past and worrying about the future. You need to surrender so that you let go of the control that you don't have anyway. And the best way to do this is through the three S's, practices that involve the three S's. And that is silence, solitude, and stillness. So I have, I've, I've spoken a lot in, in different workshops and, and in videos and a lot of the content that I do has to do with this. And it is included in my book and it is included in the program that, that, I, that I lead online. And give me a second. And that I want to share a little more about this. And what I want to what I want to explain about that is like when we engage in a practice of silence, solitude, and stillness, we what we're doing is we're quieting our minds, our busy, busy, busy minds, and we are allowing for some space to be created in our minds so that we can download divine information from whatever you believe in. To me, it's from, from God, from the Holy Spirit. But if you believe in some other higher power, then, then that's what you're downloading information from. And the reason that this is important is because the mind is limited as, as are the human beings. So if we only confide and we only depend on our thoughts, on our intelligence, or our wisdom, our abilities, then we're going to always be limited. 
And the problem is that when we're stuck in a difficult situation or when we experience adversity, loss, pain, hardships, we are our, our prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain in charge of making decisions, is compromised. Because what happens is whenever we are whenever we're in, in a stressful situation, all the oxygen, like the fight or flight response, the oxygen goes to the extremities of the body so that we can like run or fight or do what we need to do to protect ourselves. And the brain, is, the brain stays without enough oxygen. That's why we have difficulty breathing. That's why we have difficulty thinking. That's why we feel drained, overwhelmed, tired, exhausted. And it's, it's why when we try to think hard about what the right decision is to move forward, we can't, we can't. So depending on our minds, solely on our minds, because we're intellectual and we're smart and we've been able to use it to get as far as we have gotten to, is very limited and dangerous. So what stillness, solitude and silence does in a practice of mindfulness or meditation or prayer or a breathing exercise, yoga, whatever you're into, that kind of practice allows you to quiet the mind and let go of your humanity, your human thoughts, so that you can welcome your divinity. And when I say divinity, I mean the presence of God within you. We all have a divine source inside of us, right? Like when, when mom and dad made us, they, they made, like they contributed the genetics but, the, but God deposited the spirit in us. And our spirit is wise beyond belief. It can bend time and space and, 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 and intelligence and IQs. And it's the wisdom that we get from our spirit is grandiose. So it is important for us to, to be able to tap into that because that's where all our answers are. We think like, oh my gosh, when am I going to be able to find the answer? And there's a story about this man that had, um, he had lost his, his car keys in, and he was, it was, it was daytime and he was looking for them in the front yard and someone passes, like a neighbor passes by and the neighbor tells them like, hey, good man, like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking for my keys. I can't find them anywhere. And he's like, okay, I'll help you. So they both start looking in the grass and in the in the like everywhere we were in the front yard by the plants by the mailbox everything and then after a little while the neighbor goes like buddy like like where like just think where were you the last time you saw those keys and the man was like oh i know exactly where i was i was inside in the kitchen and he's like so, so why aren't you looking for the keys in the kitchen inside where they where you last saw them Oh, because I figured that there was light outside and there's no electricity, so I couldn't see inside and I decided to come outside and see if I find them. And, and it's what, as ridiculous as it sounds, is what, it's what we do. We look for the answers outside of us in external pleasures and people in like we, and, and this happens like we go to, we go to therapists, we go to attorneys, we go to counselors, coaches, and we look for the answers in other resources and people. And it is, it is important to seek out professional advice and to, to like allow ourselves to be helped by, other, by others that have maybe more experience in the area that we're struggling with. It is important to be guided, but in order to be guided by someone else, you need to choose the right person. You need to choose someone that's aligned with your purpose, your values, what you stand for, your priorities. And I always and I always tell my clients like, if you're gonna hire if you're gonna hire an attorney for like the custody of the kids or the divorce or whatnot, make sure that you hire an attorney that that has your values, that has the best interest of your sanity, your family, your 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 kids, your 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 life. You know like not just a person that's gonna be able to get you the most out of it. And we don't realize that the same is true for therapists. If you go to a therapist that's um, an atheist and you're a person of faith, you're missing out. You're missing out on using a protective factor as powerful as faith is. So go to someone that's aligned with your values and your purpose so that that person can guide you. 
The problem is, if you're operating from the mind, you may think, no, I should get the one that's the best in the, in the country rather than that's the best because they're aligned with your values. And, and, and the problem is that because our minds are not necessarily working at a, operating at 100%, they may guide us the wrong way because we're not tapping into the inner wisdom. So even finding someone to guide us and help us has to come informed by the Holy Spirit within us and by the presence of the divine within, within us. And, and I always tell my clients, listen, you don't have to listen. You are the boss. You don't have to listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not going to take offense. I'm still going to be here. Like, I understand that I can counsel you and you can do something completely different to what we talked about. And I'm still going to be here the next time with a, with a smile on my face because I cannot possibly know what's best for my client because I've had 20 years of experience. Every person is unique. And I may think I know what's best for someone. And, and if that person doesn't feel in their spirit that that's the right thing, I want them to be able to voice it and, and connect with that and prove me wrong. And I'm okay with that. So uh, like, it, I feel that no decision that you make even if it's to find guidance, should come from any other place but from your spirit. And in order to do that, you need solitude, silence, and stillness because it's in those practices that you're able to let go of the mind, give it a break, a timeout, and, and just, just connect. And it's hard and it may feel like a waste of time. And I, for years, I wish I would have known this before, but for years that I, I thought that to do to do and to think and to research and to ocuparme, you know, like like to, to just be hands-on was the way to get more done in my life and was the way to succeed further. And I've learned that less is more, less is more. And there are times that the best thing that I can do is be still, be, be in silence and be in solitude. And every morning, every morning, the first thing that I wake up is I set a timer, I get up, I set a timer for 20 minutes and I practice silent prayer or centering prayer. So that is my form of stillness, solitude and silence. And it's, and I love it because it is, it is similar to meditation, which I prefer over mindfulness because it involves quieting the mind and my mind is very very busy all the time so I know that I need to quiet my mind because it's so hard for me to do so so meditation although there's guided there's different types of meditation but the one that I'm speaking about is one of just being still in silence and what how that works is you have like 15 minutes or more if you can like ideally more the more the better you have 15 minutes in which you close your eyes, in my case, because it's a form of prayer, I consent to the Holy Spirit to come within me, to come, the divine to come within me. And, and I stay in silence for 20 minutes. I always have a bunch of thoughts. So whenever I realize that I have a thought, I'm like, whoa, okay. So then I repeat what, what meditation, what they call a mantra in meditation that I call, well, the centering prayer calls a sacred word. So let's say your sacred word is peace. So as soon as you start having a thought, you say peace, peace, peace. And because you're repeating the word, then that cancels the thought because we cannot think about two things at the same time. And that's how we're letting go, letting go of our thoughts and just consenting for, for the grace and the wisdom of God to be bestowed upon us. Um, another thing that meditation and and centering prayer and mindfulness does is it allows you to it allows you to 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 surrender to be at ease to experience peace because for that moment you are in the now you're in the present you you cannot be thinking about the past and saying your sacred word or being in silence at the same time so it is a very grounding, balancing experience because it, it, it just, it quiets everything that has been torturing you. 
because as we've as, as we discussed in our previous webinar what hurts us is not so much what happens to us what people say to us or do to us what hurts us is what we interpret from those actions behaviors and words so when we are still when we're in solitude when we're silent we are unfazed by those things because in that moment nobody is hurting you nobody is saying or doing things and you're not allowing yourself to bring the thoughts into the present moment that really belong to the past or to the uncertain future. So being able to practice something, and it could be like, you could Google and research and, and there's a bunch of apps and I'm happy to give you some recommendations if, if, you, if, you, if you need me to. But there are, there's a lot of resources that you can use and you can try different things. Mindful, like, let me go over a few of them so that you know what they are and then you can explore whichever one you're most intrigued by. Um, breathing exercises are really important because as I mentioned before, since, since our ox, whenever we're in a fight or flight experience or, or situation, our, our oxygen goes into our extremities and we're like left like unable to like breathe well and think well. So breathing allows you to get out all the used air from the lungs and replenish it with fresh oxygen. So breathing allows you to like change your brain neurochemically and calm down and become peaceful because there are a lot of other things and we've spoken in, in something that I talk about in my online program is affirmations and how you can reprogram your mind by, by speaking to yourself through self-talk. But when you when you talk to yourself, you have to be in a peaceful state so that the brain and the subconscious mind can connect with it. If you are in fight or flight, if you're anxious, if you're freaking out, if you're nervous, if you're angry, if you're, if you're like full of all these emotions, you, you're, what's, what's triggered, what triggers the cortisol, which is the stress hormone in your brain, um, when there's like a stressful situation, is the amygdala. And that part of the brain is nonverbal. It's preverbal. So at the beginning, we need to calm down and balance our, our brains neurochemically. And we do that through breathing. So breathing is always the beginning of any mindful practice. I do it before my centering prayer. Even though I'm not like hysterical in the mornings or freaking out, like I'll still do it to like get grounded, to, to help be like stay in the present moment because when you're breathing you're also focusing just on that and it all it just replenishes your oxygen and your and your neurochemical needs in the brain so starting with breathing allows you to again connect with the present moment and enter a state of of balance of of stillness and then you could, you could still stay, there's a lot of exercises that just involve breathing and there's all types. There's some to help you relax, there's others to, to help you like have more endurance. There's different kinds of breathing exercises. The ones that help you relax, two of the, the basic ones are the most famous ones or known, are the box breathing, which is you inhale for four seconds. So let's do it together. We're gonna inhale for four seconds. We're gonna pause for four seconds, then exhale, then, then ex exhale, then uh, hold it for four seconds, inhale, like, so we're going to do like that, it's going to be a box, so inhale, pause, exhale, pause, like hold it, when I say pause, I mean hold it, so we're going to do that four seconds, okay, so inhale, stop, exhale, Hold it. And then we start again. Inhale. Hold it. Exhale. Hold it. So that is something that helps you relax. And another one that I really like, which is usually the one that I practice, is you inhale for, let's say, three seconds and you exhale for six seconds. So you're gonna exhale for twice as long the time that you inhaled for. If you do three seconds, then six. If you do four, then eight. The reason that I like this one is because I have a hard time, like sometimes I, I, I have a hard time catching my breath my breath because I'm always so like 
busy and, and running around that I, I literally don't stop to breathe. And this form of, of breathing allows you to empty your lungs from, this, from the used air so that you can inhale and really fill them up with the new air. So the reason we inhale for just half the time is because we need to, we need to first exhale as much as possible to empty the lungs and then we can fill them up with the inhale. So the exhale is longer because, the, because we need to get out all this stuff from there. And I like the symbolic meaning of that, at least the symbolic meaning for me. I have a lot of, of, of weight on my shoulders and, and, and I have a lot of, of daily experiences that I go through with my clients, with the, the activities and the projects that I have that are, that are constantly like filling my cup. And, and, and some of those things drain me, some of the, those things pain me, hurt me. So I, I, and as a therapist, like I am constantly listening to problems and to negative things. And I am exposed to a lot of different kinds of energy. So I'm constantly like putting a lot of stuff inside that's not good for me and I need to empty all of it in order to breathe in good information and good energy and like you know peace and all these things so I practice that one because it works for me and symbolically I always say like I always give it the meaning of I'm inhaling peace and I'm exhaling pain and struggles and stress and when you inhale you are you're, you're triggering the, the parasympathetic system, nervous system, right? And the parasympathetic is the one that relaxes you. When you're exhaling, that is the one that is not, sorry, I, I got it backwards. When you inhale, like that's why when you're, when you're like stressed out, you're like, like, you, like you're, you're going like that. When you're inhaling, you are triggering the sympathetic part of the nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system that reacts when you're in danger and you have to like do something. But when you're exhaling, you're triggering the parasympathetic nervous system, which allows you then to relax. So exhaling for longer is also giving you a longer opportunity to like let go of all the things that are preventing you from experiencing peace. So breathing is always important and should be a part of every exercise but you can also do a breathing practice in and of itself. And that's what all the like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour may consist of. And mindfulness is being able to use your five senses to experience your present moment without judgment. So for example, there's different mindful practices such as body scan where you go through your entire body and you try to pay attention to what you're feeling in each part of your body. Like if you're feeling a, a backache, if, you're, if you feel your, your, your clothes rubbing against your skin, if you're touching your, the, the floor with your feet, everything that you touch, you smell, you hear, you see, you taste, you experience in mindful practices without judgment. So let's say, Let's say you practice mindfulness in the morning and you're sitting down and you're and you're you have your eyes closed and then you go to to the taste, right? To the sense of taste. And you're like, okay, so like you, you taste your morning breath. You taste morning breath. You don't taste taste bad morning breath. Me apesta la boca, my you know, like my breath stings, like you don't judge it. So the important thing about mindfulness is that you do experience everything with your senses, which are very human and not divine. But when you experience it without judgment, you get closer to that divine wisdom because it, 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 it um, grounds you in the present moment. Being mindful allows you to be like present because you're thinking and feeling and processing everything that your senses are are witnessing in that moment. So that's mindfulness, experiencing life through your senses without judgment. Mm. And then meditation, there's millions of, of meditations, there's guided meditations, there is, there is silent meditation. There's all kinds of, of different of types and different ones. And you can look at 
Okay, you can Google to see which one is more appealing to you. And then there's prayer. And I, when I say prayer, I'm not, although it is important and powerful to read the scriptures, to, to, to speak to God, to share, you know, like your, your concerns. The one that I'm talking about specifically today is just sitting in silence in the presence of the Holy Spirit and just telling him like, hey, you have work to do. And I consent for you to come inside of me, just take over. I'm, I'm yours. I'm yours. Because God's a gentleman and he does not go into the lives of those who don't allow him in it. So you have to open the door and that is a way of doing that. I particularly, like you could go to like a chapel, a park, like a, a place in your house where, where you feel sacred and peaceful. Just, just find a spot that has like that right silence and, and, and solitude, like where solitude is, is a beautiful thing. I heard this once and I think it's so beautiful. Being alone can be something really painful or really amazing. And there are two different words to be able to distinguish between the two. So being alone in a negative way, like, oh my gosh, I have nobody, nobody cares. I'm alone in this world is referred to as loneliness. But when you're alone and fulfilled and whole and it feels good and you're like, I want to stay like this forever. I don't want anybody to come and interrupt this. That's solitude. So being in solitude in stillness and in silence is a gift. It is a beautiful gift. So those are some of the, the forms, like the practices that can allow you to tap into your inner wisdom. They take time. I would say like be, do them consistently for two weeks and you will start seeing a transformation. I've been doing it for a couple of years now and I, 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 I feel like I feel like that, that has been it for me. It has, I know, I, I've been doing a whole lot of other, practicing a whole lot of clinical tools in my life and they're all powerful and beautiful and important. But, but even then, like even though I master reframing and affirmations and doing all these things, I still need the wisdom to know when to practice which and when, when I'm feeling and embracing pain or when I am, when I'm dwelling on suffering, right? Like, and that's part of what we talk about in the, in my online program. It's being able to distinguish between pain and suffering and, and being able to develop the wisdom to distinguish and discern between the two. So you, we, we still need to have contact with our inner wisdom to know if someone that we chose is guiding us the right way, if, if the tool that we want to implement is appropriate in that moment and and if we're being guided the right way because in the end we are we all have a life purpose and our pains are guiding us to that purpose our pain is our greatest gift even though it may sound a little masochist on my behalf so let me tell you what meditation mindfulness prayer or breathing can do for you did I share the screen or no? Did I share it? No, you're not. Oh, I'm not sharing. Okay. There we go. The technology and I. Okay. Share the screen. Okay. So we said. We said here that what we needed if we felt lost was guidance. When we're worrying about the future and the past, we need the present moment. And when we have no control, we need surrender because if we're not gonna have control over it anyway, then we need to accept and surrender it to God or, or to a higher power. And how we get that through a meditation or mindful practice is seeing like living your life by turning on the GPS. So instead of global positioning system, to me, it's God positioning system. And because we feel lost when we're stuck in pain, 
we need guidance. We need to turn on the GPS and say, hey, you know, where am I supposed to go now? I have a decision to make by tomorrow and I have no idea of what that's going to be. Can you give me peace? Because that's how God speaks to us. Can you give me peace with what that decision should be? Can, can you show me the way? And the thing is, I wish so badly that God would come and tell me, Betsy, this is how you do it. But the guy does not do that with me. I don't know if he's that generous with you. So I have to depend on quieting my mind and tapping into my inner wisdom, to, into the divine wisdom. And the way I do that is by turning on the GPS, God's positioning system. So when you use God as your GPS, you, you receive guidance, you receive the gift of living in the present moment, and you receive the ability to surrender. When I speak about guidance, I, when, when we get to, when we, when we experience hardship, adversity, pain, we get to the point that we feel we've done it all and we're stuck. We reach that wall and it's too tall for us to climb with our bare feet or with our human abilities. So when we reach that wall, we have the ability, the power to be lifted from that wall by our GPS. So he, like we, we're, we get to the end, to the, to the dead end, and then he goes like, okay, this is our wall. It's like, okay, I got you. He picks us up and he takes us over that wall or that end and he gives us all, at that point, sky really is the limit because if, if we continue to do all the things that we know how to do, that people can show us how to do, we're gonna be able to ac accomplish a lot. Like we have amazing abilities as human beings. The problem is when we hit our maximum potential as humans, what do we do then? When there's that wall, how are we lifted past that wall? And that is living a life that's guided because at that point you get directions as well. So if you think of a GPS, the other day I was wanting to get to the Coconut Grove for those that are not from Miami. A, that is a beautiful little town in Miami. And I wanted to go through the, through the through Sunset Drive, which is a more scenic drive, like a beautiful street. And, and there, you could also go through the, through the expressway, which is, is the Palmetto. So I, I turn on the GPS and I'm like, okay, God, I want to go to Coconut Grove. Okay, so I put in the destination in the, the GPS because we have free will and we get to tell God, like, this is what I want. But don't confuse destination by route. Your, your final destination is like, you know, God, I want to find peace. I want to be happy again. Uh, and if you're going through divorce, it's not like, God, I want to be peaceful, but I want to be peaceful staying in my marriage because that's the route. You want to be peaceful or you want to stay married? You know, like, and, and sometimes it coincides. Or let's say like you lost a loved one and, and, and you want to find happiness again or you want to honor your kid through, through love and, and, or your spouse or the person that you lost. You want, to, you want to honor them by keeping their memory alive through love and gratitude and service. Then, then that's your final destination. You think it's going to be through a foundation. You think it's going to be by speaking through speaking engagements, but that's the route. So we just put in the, the final destination. The Jeep, we don't tell the GPS where to take us through. So we turn on the GPS, we put final destination, I put Coconut Grove. And when I'm getting, I'm on the Palmet, I'm, I'm on Sunset Drive, which is the street that I wanted to take all the way. And then the GPS, when I'm getting to the Palmetto, which is the expressway, tells me turn left. And I'm like, no, it's, there's probably a lot of traffic and it's not as beautiful of a drive. And this is the route that I know really want. I want to go through here. So I keep going. I think the GPS is just so wrong. So I keep going. And then we, I get to the next, the next light and I'm like, okay, the GPS must have, you know, must have figured out that we're going this way. And the GPS tells me, recalculate and make a U-turn. I'm like, no. I'm not going through the Palmetto. It doesn't make any sense. I'm going through here. And then I keep on going. And then the GPS is like recalculating, make a U-turn. And I'm like, oh, 
crap. This doesn't know anything. So I turn it off and I keep on going. And guess what? I get to the Coco Plum Circle, which is right before you get to the Grove. And there's ambulances and like police officers and cars. And, and it's, it's, there's an accident. There's an accident that I could not see from where I was because that's the thing about living a guided life. You have bird's eye view. You have a satellite looking at your past, your present, your future, what's going to happen tomorrow and how your decisions today are going to impact your experiences tomorrow. And like your GPS is, is like knows everything. Whereas you just know what you have in front of you, but you can't see what's in front of that wall or that building or the trees and, and everything like your the, the cars are blocking your view and you think you're so smart and you can depend on your mind. Good luck with that. Good luck to me. Because when I got to the Coco Plum Circle, I was screwed up and I had to come back. I never made it to Coco Plum on time. So living a guided life means that we listen to our GPS, not like I did, because I am a recovering control freak and I still have some my days and my symptoms, but I'm working on it. And because I thought the illusion that I could control everything, I, I, would, I would listen to my mind more than I would to my inner wisdom because it was too loud in my mind anyway. There was no space for wisdom. And when I started living a guided life, every little decision I surrender to the Holy Spirit, I'm like, okay, so today I have 10 hours worth of work and only five hours to do it. So can you, can you hook me up? Because I can't make the, the hours be longer than 60 minutes and, you know, like, but can you do something to help me be more efficient and manage to do in five hours what I need to, what I would typically do in 10? And I can't tell you, like, it's just, it's incredible how, how, like, it just happens. And, and, I, and I don't take the credit because I know I'm not capable of it. I've, I've proven it before. And sometimes it happens because since I meditated and I had, I was present and I was energetic, I, I was more efficient. Other times it happens because God wakes me up at four o'clock in the morning instead of six. And I had two extra hours to do some of the work. Other times it happens because a client canceled last minute and that gave me the hour that I needed to complete it. It just, it's just, it's amazing. And the beautiful thing about this is that when you're being guided, you're able to recognize all the, the most minimal blessings because, because you see how like God is putting everything into place to hook you up so that you can get to the coconut grove on time. It's, it's amazing. So living a guided life means you don't have to worry about it because you, know, you don't know how you're, you don't, oh, but here's the thing. And then I guess this is how it connects to the present moment and I'll share a little bit of that now when you live a guided life you also have the opportunity to live in the present moment because while you're driving you can only see a little piece ahead so imagine you're driving late at night in the mountains of georgia and it's pitch black and your, your headlights only light up 350 feet. 350 feet are, light, are lit up. So you, you don't know what's ahead of 350 feet. And it's, and it's pitch black. It's super dark, which is what it feels like when we're in pain. It feels dark and it feels like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And like, when are, when are we going to get there? And, and we're worried about the final destination, which is a mistake because you're... you're missing out on the process you're missing out on the beautiful experiences of the process so what happens is when we're living a guided life with the gps we're only we only have 350 feet lit up and we're like buddy like can you tell me to turn left a little ahead of time so that i prepare and he's like i won't tell you a minute earlier than you need it so many times we're like Okay, God, but can you tell me what's going to happen and when I'm by? Just tell me if in five months, 53 hours and 20 seconds, I am going to be happy again. And then I'll figure it out. Like, I'll figure it out these times. But no, 
he doesn't print out the whole map and tell you like, so first you're gonna turn left and then you're gonna turn right and then you're gonna do this and then that's gonna happen and then you're gonna be happy and then your husband's gonna make your life miserable and then you're gonna feel this piercing pain for having lost that person and then you're, you're gonna be broke as heck and you're gonna be living under a bridge, but then you're gonna recover. He doesn't tell you all that. You have to go step by step, step by step, trusting and learning all these beautiful virtues of patience, trust, surrender it's amazing like because you by living the process you grow and you and you find the virtues the strengths the training that you need to be able to rise up when your time comes but it's always one step at a time and 350 feet of lighting at a time and and we get to we get to chill we just, we just t do what the GPS tells us. We don't even have to think. It's amazing. So living in the present moment is important because there's a, I don't remember who it is that says this, but there's someone that talks about how when we live in the past, we experience, we experience depression. When we live in the future, we experience anxiety. Only when we're in the present moment can we experience peace. And the idea behind this is that the now is the only time that exists now is the only time if you ask anyone what time is it now what time is it now now what time is it it's now so it's only now time is an illusion it's a thing that we humans created because we have to put in a little square everything that we can't understand so in order to understand it we need to like like label it. So we call the time and hours and days and 24 hours and 60 minutes and 60 seconds. And, but, but that's, we made that up because what we humans do is we make everything that is infinite, finite. And that's why only depending on our minds and our skills is limited because that is finite. That dies with us, but our spirit, our wisdom, our grace, the presence of God within us, that's eternal. So being able to connect with the present moment through any mindful practice of the ones that like, especially the ones that we talked about, allows us to, to come, come to the present moment and realize that what we're worrying about isn't really happening. My daughter, my daughter's not dying right now. I, I'm not on the streets or under a bridge right now. I'm, 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 I'm fully dressed and I have food to eat right now. I'm here speaking to you guys right now. So right this moment, nothing bad is happening to me. But if I decide to live in the past, oh, the past, that now that was now in the past that was painful so if i bring it to my now then of course it's gonna hurt and then if i start worrying about like oh my gosh and then am i am i gonna have enough money am i gonna be able to 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 do this uh, will i find someone that will love me am i gonna be able to make that money back i you know like am i gonna succeed in life is, is there a purpose for me is there is this the best that i can get if, if we don't if we live in the future, we also don't have the opportunity to embrace the fact that that hasn't happened. In Alcoholics Anonymous and in a lot of, of the addiction programs, they, they do the 12-step program and they have a poem on living one day at a time. And they say that there's two days of, that poem says that there's two days in the week that when you, like the two days in the week that are, that are not good, that you should get rid of. And those days are yesterday and tomorrow. That only today is, is a day that, 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 is, that is valid, that matters. And I had a friend tell me that, the, and then that, that's the poem that ends with, you gotta live one day at a time. And I had a friend that told me that he, he was an alcoholic and that when he started this program, he was like, oh my gosh, I can never drink again. There's going to be a time where I'm going to go to Europe with my family, my wife, and I'm going to ha want to have a bottle of wine. And there's a time that I'll go to Ireland and I want to have some scotch and, and be able to drink something. 
and he was he was so worried about that day that he's going to be able to do those things and like and not be able to drink it, it was just he just couldn't bear it but then he realized that that day wasn't today that day wasn't right now and that what he feels right now is not what he's going to feel tomorrow and what he knows right now is not what he's going to know tomorrow so this same guy is very happily married, which the, the alcohol almost cost him his, his family. And he's gone to Italy and he's gone to Ireland and he's traveled abroad with his family and he doesn't care to have a drink. He eats delicious food instead. He does not care to have the drink. So he was worried about something that never even happened. Worrying about the future is lack of trust, it's lack of surrender, lack of acceptance, it's, it's being a coward, it's, it's not having enough faith to realize that God's got you. Just follow the GPS 375 feet at a time. And I remember one of the, the stories that was helpful for me to remember the idea of living in the present moment was when I for some time, the darkest part of my grief was how my daughter died. Like thinking, like having flashbacks of like, like I, I don't know, I don't know how it happened. I was in the pool with her. So I, I, I just don't understand how it happened. So I would try to understand and, and think and like imagine things and, and have like scenarios and, and, and imagine what she thought about when she was under the water, like, mommy, where are you? Like, you're not taking care of me. Like, like feeling abandoned, neglected. Like I had all these like nightmares and, and haunting flashbacks that was, that were consuming me or, or images of, of her lifeless body. And, and where it, where it, when it became real, that, that that's it, that she wasn't going to be saved that way I wanted her to be saved. And a day, there was a day in which the priest that used to be my spiritual director came into my house just to visit and give me a hug. And he stayed for a little bit. And I told him about this and he was like, Betsy, if you had a really bad headache last week, like a bad migraine, and you were inside like in your room with everything, like all the lights turned off and everything dark and you were like, like it was unbearable. And you took medicine and you got better and you know, that already happened. Are you still like telling me about this headache today? I'm like, no, if that headache finished, I'm not thinking about that thing anymore. It's gone, bye-bye headache. I, no, I'm not talking about that headache. And he was like, where's Fofi right now? And I am a woman of faith and I believe that she's in heaven. And I believe that heaven is a super cool place because it took me a while to like, really believe in heaven because you know we christians we believe in heaven but god forget god forbid i die and if we really truly understood how amazing heaven is we would all be suicidal and be like oh my gosh i can't wait to die right because so i had to believe that heaven was that amazing place and that was work that i had to do but i do believe she's in heaven and i think she's the happiest kid in heaven and and i can imagine her glowing smile and her like by vibrant like like eyes big dark brown eyes I, I, and I like I imagine her around flowers and butterflies and like the, the blue skies and translucent green grass and I have like this whole image of how beautiful her her home is and when I thought about it I'm like if I think she's there like how am I the selfish mom that can be happy for her daughter who is living the life. And I wanna be a good mom. So I decided I was gonna believe that, like I was gonna become the mom that was happy for her kid instead of the selfish one that wanted, her, wanted to have her by her side. So living in the present moment allowed me to have that vision and, and embrace it and use it every time I forget it because I forget it all the time. I, by the way, these things, you know, being guided, living in the present moment and surrendering, it's not a linear thing that you master and then you continue doing it forever, like math, right? Like you master addition and then you continue to do addition forever and you're good. You know that two plus two is four. 
this is like an everlasting work in progress. Like right when I feel like, oh, I'm the guided life kind of girl, then I realize, oh crap, I'm trying to take control again. Or when I feel like, oh, I'm the queen of surrender, then I realize, oh, but I didn't give this up. So, so it is, it is an, which is beautiful because it, it keeps us living in the present moment and continuing to work on ourselves. And we never get too comfortable to, to, to not continue like living, right? Because we don't want to get in survival mode. We want to always be alive. So that's present moment. And then surrender, I've mentioned it in many occasions. And what I mean by surrender is we have the opportunity to, we have the opportunity to give up what we can't control because we can't control it anywhere, anyway, and stop worrying about it. So surrender allows us to accept reality and then use our energy on healing and pursuing what we can control. Because we're, if we're constantly dwelling on like, but it wasn't supposed to be this way. And, you know, like he's supposed to give me this and she was supposed to bury me. And I, I you know, like I worked so hard for that money. And I, and I'm, you know, like I, I've done so much to be able to be where I'm at. Like, and I've invested so much on this project of that person. If, if we're constantly battling reality, we're, we're wasting our energy on fighting it. And we're always going to lose because if we're stuck in traffic and we start cursing and Batman, you know, like start with our road rage, is that going to make traffic go away? Traffic is there. You can scream, you can fight with it, but it's not going to change it. Every time we fight against reality, we lose. And every time we don't accept what is, we lose because then we're investing our energy on resisting, on fighting and on complaining, on being upset by it, on suffering, on dwelling on it, instead of using our precious and limited energy to heal, to calm ourselves, to ask for, for guidance, to experience the present moment, to acknowledge the blessings around us. So surrender is, surrender is not the same as giving up. Some people confuse it and they think like, no, how can I surrender this? Like that would be giving up. No, <laughs> surrender is to give up only what you cannot control and to continue doing what you're guided to do. So surrender is, a, is power, it's a strength because only people that are courageous enough to relinquish power over their lives can do this. So it is a power, but the people that are too weak to trust, to have patience, to connect with the inner wisdom, to be guided, can't practice surrender. And then it's like, they keep like, they keep running around in circles and they're, they're trapped because they, they can't connect with, with the higher power that's going to allow them to take care of the things that were out of their reach. It's, if when we surrender, like, I surrender everything to God. Like I said, sometimes I catch myself failing at it. But if I, if I see that I'm, I'm writing a book and, and I have deadlines and I am like very rigid about like, like I'm a woman of my word. And if I told my editor, I'm going to have it ready by this date, I am going to have it ready by that date. And I can be very rigid when it comes to that because I feel like it's inconsiderate to not, like, you know, like meet the, the deadlines. But I realized that some chapters took longer than I thought they would. And I put in the time and I put in the effort and I would wake up at four and I would go to sleep at one and I would, and I would get sick because I wasn't resting and I, and I would do everything in my power and I still couldn't meet the deadline. Then I get to surrender it. And I, and I get to accept that God's timing is perfect and, I, and, I, and that it's okay and that I don't need to be as rigid as, as, as I've been in the past and that that doesn't mean I'm, I'm being inconsiderate. So I've, I, I surrender every little thing in my life, every little thing. If I don't think I have time, if, 
I don't think I'm capable of being happy again after losing my daughter. I, I just tell him like, hey God, I put it on the GPS. Like I want to honor my daughter through joy, guide, like gratitude, service, love. That's what that's that's in my GPS. And then he recalculates the crap out of my life because he's done that many times. And he shows me the way and he tells me what to do. You know, I didn't want to write this book. I was writing a different book for relationships and communication, and I was happy with that. It was my own trademarked uh, concept, and I was excited about it. And then God came through a person, because he usually uses angels or signs or symbols or little thoughts that you're like, oh, this came from something higher than me. And, and that person told me, you need to start your book with your story. And I'm like, no, what does that have to do with couples and relationship? It's like, you need to start your book with, I'm like, no, it doesn't have any, you need to start your book with your story. And I'm like, okay. So I started it and then I stayed in it. So the next one will be on couples and communication because I already started it. So guidance, recalculating, no, make a U-turn. And the times in which you feel you lose your peace, those are the times that God is like, recalculating, don't go that way. That's not working because he speaks through peace. So if, you don't, if you're like, yeah, Betsy, but this is so abstract. What do you mean? Like, how do you live a guided life? When you lose sleep over something, when you find yourself agitated because you, you're, you're, you're going a certain route or you're thinking about making a decision or you're hanging out with a person or if, if, if that situation, person, or experience robs you of your peace, run the other way. Run the other way. That's God telling you, recalculating, get the heck out of there because that's not what I want for you. And when you find peace, even if it's still painful or scary, because peace doesn't remove the emotion, you could still feel a little, feel a little scare, scared, you're excited right like you're scared but you're excited you or, or you can you can feel nervous but you but you have peace like you you have that calming sense of this is what i'm supposed to be doing then you go that way that is god telling you what the right route is and usually it, i mean it has to be scary it has to be scary for you to like if it's too smooth of a ride mm, i don't know you question that but sometimes, you know, it has to be scary and not because, not because we're doomed and we're supposed to suffer, but rather because it is through pain that we accomplish our greatest successes. So it's, we have to make sure that we don't waste that pain because God knows it doesn't feel good. And that is something also that I, that I share in the program where I teach you guys how to use the pain to rise up to from you know above adversity okay let's go back here so i am gonna tell you a little bit about the online program that i have but i wanted to give you some testimonials i have a client that's been married for over 50, 25 years she lost her son to cancer and when she felt she was done, she was falling apart, she couldn't deal anymore with the pain, she found out her husband had been cheating throughout the son's illness and was still with the woman. And the, the pain that I, that I felt witnessed in that woman, I just, I can't even express, but because she was guided and she surrendered and she practiced being in the present moment, not only has she been able to rise from losing her only son, but she also saved her marriage and is happier than ever. Like they're always sending me pictures and, and giving me updates. I, you know, I stopped seeing them almost a year ago. So it's, it's been a while and they're still, sending me updates on how amazing their life is going. And she sent me a text. One of the texts that she sent me a few months ago was, we're getting closer and depending on each other and getting closer to each other and mainly to God. So thank you, our angel, for being a great part of that. So they, they're they a beautiful example of using God as the GPS. And then this and is I one of you. our... 
Ah, this is one of our Heart to Hope girls. Ah, sorry. And I thank you all. I, I, I feel like I'm still going to continue because this is literally, it's just how, like, I have tough, tough, tough days, but I feel that um, it's just going one day at a time. And, 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 and these videos, literally, when I have my downs, I just go back and just think, and, you know, I'm not the only one going through these this, like this awful pain that that even though it, we express it differently it's pain and it's it comes from inside i am so proud of you and thank you thank, i don't know how to i don't know how to thank everyone because i literally have you guys in my thought i actually prayed with um with my children last night and now I, I was praying for you guys because i'm like i know that 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 you guys are with me like I feel it like I feel that 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 getting connected with God and with people that that believe and have faith and, and helps helps so she's our she's our girl and she she lost her daughter very very recently it, I don't think it's been two months maybe maybe it's been a little over two months she she's from dominican republic and she found the program on on instagram and the the transformation that we've seen in just six weeks with her has been such a beautiful testimony i'm i'm so proud and the community that we've that we've built with like based on hope not on loss has also been very special so what would your day look like if you knew exactly what to do and had the energy to do so because you're guided and you are well informed by the GPS satellite that has bird's eye view. And I just want to emphasize that I'm not different to you. A lot of people are like, no, it's because you have this and you studied psychology and, and you um, you know, like you have faith and you, but the truth is that everything that I've used to tap into my inner wisdom, I have had to learn in the last few years. It had nothing to do with a PhD. It had nothing to do with what I have or don't have. These are things that you can explore and, and experience and, and learn yourself. So would you allow me to accompany you in this journey and have the honor of helping you go from being stuck to becoming elevated. I, I created this online program called From Hurt to Hope because I want to honor my daughter through service. And I found that many times the people that, like more people were calling me from individual, for individual therapy than I was able to see. So I got to the point that I had to stop accepting clients and, and build up a, a group private practice. But I know that I'm the girl. I'm your girl. I'm the girl for a lot of people. My team is freaking amazing and they are the people for other situations. But when it comes to adversity or pain or loss, I'm your girl. So I want to be able to support you through it. And I want to be able to honor my daughter in everything that I do because she really gives me purpose and inspiration. So I created this program in which I have the opportunity to, to bring hope to hopelessness and to, to help you transform pain into the biggest blessing that leads to, to hope and happiness. And that program is the Hurt to Hope. It is a, it's an online program that consists of five modules. Each module has three or more videos and each video has like each video lesson has a hope sheet. So it's like, a, it's a worksheet, but it brings hope. So I call it hope sheets. And those hope sheets are like, allow you to do the clinical work. So I figured like, you know, I want people to not just hear me say things and be inspired. I want them to be inspired to take action because only through, through action can you really 
like accomplish the healing that you're looking for. So what I decided to do is I created this program that allows me to reach way more people than one-on-one -on -one because there's not enough time in the day. My, my one-on-one -on -one, um, fees is, is close to $400, it's $395 an hour. And I also know a lot of people can't afford that. So I decided to do a program that everybody could afford because we have payment options and that would still have the great benefits of individual grief therapy or, or, or therapy to be able to overcome any form of hardship or adversity. And in creating these, in these videos and this, this program, I also added a sense of community because I feel that when we're going through this, being able to see that others are on the same page and in different stages of, of ours allows us to position ourselves in a more realistic um, situation or platform where we realize like, okay, so this person felt what I felt and look, they're feeling joy again and they're feeling they're better. They, they're, they found hope and this has worked for them. And so it's not just me helping you guys. It's, it's all of us contributing to the growth of one another because we have different experiences and value to share. And that's what I, I've seen in my, my, pro, my virtual sessions. Originally, it was supposed to be a questions and answers session, but it evolved into becoming a support group, a, a group therapy, like whatever you needed and wanted to be. So I have people, like what's beautiful about it also is that it's in blocks of six weeks where you have an hour and a half of the coaching, the free coaching included in the, in the program. And during that hour and a half, we do whatever you want. If you want to ask questions about the program, about your life, about your relationship, about whatever you want, then you ask the questions. If you want to process, if you want to share, if you want to say, tell others, like support others, it's been so beautiful. And because it's in lots of six weeks, then you also get to connect with the people in a special way because it's not, it's not like people are coming in and out every week. Like you, you get a, you make a connection with them. You also have the opportunity to continue engaging in future live coaching sessions for a, like a two ninety seven, which is a very reduced price because you get not, six weeks, you get nine hours of of online coaching, group coaching, which would cost. 4740 if you were paying it at 395 an hour and then you have the bonus of the live group coaching calls which is $2400 you have the members only facebook group which allows you to be accountable and get extra content and you have the hope sheets which which is how you implement to your life and you apply to your life the clinical the clinical lessons that are being taught in the videos so that this is where you make it your own if you if you don't like this if you don't think you're, it's a good program if you're not satisfied if you gave it a shot and you did the work but you thought it sucked i will give you your money back because i don't believe in buyer's remorse i i want to again i don't do this for the money the truth is it may not even make sense to do to do it if it's for the money. I do this to honor my daughter. So it would be completely unethical and against my own values to take your money and not serve you in any way and not bring the hope that I promised. So if you feel that this program wasn't good for you and it didn't bring you the hope that you were hoping for and it didn't make you a little wiser and a little more connected to your inner wisdom, then show me that you did the, the videos and attend the sessions. And so you get all that for free and I'll give you the money back 100%. And I'll do it gladly and happily. And I will still love you and love to see your face in these webinars every other time. So the program is normally 997 and starting, um, this was the launch year. I started this on, on March during the pandemic. And so I'm doing a special this year for three, 347, we only have two more sessions left. Once January kicks in, we go back to the 997. And, you know, maybe as we continue to add to the program, by the way, you have lifetime um, access to it. So for as long as 
this program is online and I continue to add content, content you can continue to benefit from that and, and you can come for refreshers and you can redo the hope sheets so it's not something that expires. So as, as it continues to grow, because I plan on continuing to include content in the program, then obviously it'll become more expensive, but you, you won't have to pay anything additional. So now at 347, we have payments of 147 um, every other week. So if you don't, if you can't afford 347 now, then you can do the three payments of 147. And you are welcome to go enroll right now at her2hope.com slash join if you want to get unstuck and transform your life and learn how to view pain in a light that's going to serve you and your life. And you're responsible for also making a difference in this world. So if you're not doing it for yourself, make sure that you do it for the people you love and for us because we're all part of one universe under God and we're all responsible for bringing our gifts to the world and to contribute to making it a better place than we found it. And I am all yours now. So I am open for questions. If you'd like to share anything, any question, any concern, anything. It doesn't even have to be about the webinar because this is free therapy, guys. So shoot, I'm here. And I am comfortable with the awkward silence. So like it, it usually takes people a couple minutes to share. So I will just wait here peacefully and patiently. Do, 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 do. My assistant has my back. She's like, I can ask a question if you want. <laughs> She's so sweet. You guys want to see her? No, no, no. <laughs> She's so awesome. <laughs> her thing is this abuse that I have her here at this time. No questions, guys? Free therapy? Yes. Yes, Vivian, you definitely can. I would love that. Um, so we're, we're the coaching sessions, this, this session, it, it changes and it usually depends on, on, on a survey that we do. We're thinking about doing it on Wednesdays at four or maybe even five, but I have like, I have to see if other people can make make it at five because it's five to six thirty but would five work for you Rita five would work I can hear you you have to unmute yourself okay yes definitely 5 p.m would work best for me okay four doesn't work right no because I work until 4 30 so I get home at a quarter of 20 or five so five would work okay five. I don't, can you take note of that? At 5 p.m.? Yeah. I have to, fi I have to figure it out because my, my evenings are a little hectic and I have some other programs, but we can make it happen. Yeah. We can make it happen. I would love that. Vivian, would that work for you? Five o'clock? I know you usually work later. I think for you it was better in the morning. I can make it happen. <laughs> okay, you could do it from your phone and you don't have to put turn on your, your camera like you could just listen to it on your AirPod, AirPods. Perfect. <laughs> It'll be Wednesdays? Wednesdays at 5. That's, Wednesdays that's at five. the proposed time, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see. So no more questions, you guys. Hey, Betsy, how are you doing? This is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Yes. Uh, so the first one is, do you think, um, so currently I am doing um, my master's in counseling. And why I landed here is because I follow your work in Facebook and Instagram because I really love it. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that this could be a good um, thing just to gain knowledge as well? I'm not going currently to a rough moment, I would say, but just for knowledge, you know? 
Well, I have to tell you, Michelle, that what's really cool about this program is that it prepares you for life because it's based on the experience of loss. And we experience loss every day. Every day we lost a little bit of youth and we lost our previous day and we lost the previous moment. So we're always experiencing loss, like the loss of expectations, the loss of dreams, the loss. we experience failure, adversity. So what's really beautiful about this is that these are tools that you don't only use while you're going through grief or while you're going through the loss of your marriage or your life as you knew it. These are tools that you will be able to apply to every single thing in your life. In fact, one of the most, one of the coolest testimonials I've had is from one of my first girls that was in the first session, who's actually continuing in our group coaching now, this next block of sessions. And she lost her mother. And she says that she had found herself using all the tools with her husband, with her kid, and in like experience, she's a teacher. So like in, in stuff at school, like she was constantly using all the tools that she learned in the program in many different areas of their life. And I, I use them every single, like every day of my life, I will work, like I will use reframing, which is one of the tools that I talk about, or I'll use visualization exercises. I meditate every day and practice mindfulness. I, I, I try to live in the present moment. I, every pain that I go to go through because waking up at four is painful. <laughs> like I, the other day I had like the worst stomach virus. I had to call rescue. I had to call the paramedics at three o'clock in the morning. I felt like an old lady because I was, I was, I felt like I was dehydrating. It was terrible. And I remember in that moment with the piercing pain that I had, I was like, I, like I would close my eyes and I would try to like meditate and be in the present moment. And I would, I would, I would literally say thank you to my pain. Like I would feel grateful for the pain. I would feel grateful for the fact that I was in my house and I could run to, to the bathroom to throw up and I wasn't caught up in an airplane or somewhere uncomfortable where it's not my home. And I was grateful that I had a husband there. Like I thought about single moms and and how they, they had no one to call and they can't run to the hospital or, or, or get, you know, like they have to do everything themselves. Like, I like, so then in the process, I got a little better as a human being because I was able to appreciate the blessings, the miss, the pain of being sick and, and the blessings that I have. And I was also able to send a little love and a heartfelt prayer for the single moms that didn't have the help because I was able to wake up my husband and tell him I'm dying. Call the net, call nine one one. So you, I think it'll be really beautiful for you because although the videos are directed towards people that have lost their marriage, their families, their loved one, they like so the examples may not necessarily resonate directly with you. You will still benefit from from like you say the the knowledge or the wisdom of of learning how to embrace pain as, as a fertilizer that helps you grow. Thank you, thank you. So the next session, Vivian's asking, the next session starts next Wednesday, October 7th, right, 7th? And um, Sylvie, you were talking about relationship therapy and I just wanted to tell you that every Tuesday, and all of you actually, every Tuesday I have a free Q&A it's usually at 12, but sometimes depending on, on events and projects that I have going on, I have to move it to 1.30 or so. But every Tuesday, I do a live Q&A and you can go to Better With Betsy on Instagram. I do it through Instagram. And you, I always post to let you know the time for that Tuesday. So, and you can ask the questions on Instagram or you can ask the questions live. So if, if you have questions about your relationship, it, that's that I thought that was my gift and I thought God's what God wanted me to do and he was like just kidding Betsy you're I'm, you're gonna, I'm gonna recalculate you you're gonna make a u-turn and you're gonna be working with these things so I still do work with couples and um, and I love it absolutely love it uh, but I but the work that I'm doing at a bigger scale in terms of like online programs although I have an online program for couples too actually um 
the, the work that I'm doing in terms of like creating programs and content and writing a book is mostly about overcoming adversity. October 7, which apps do you recommend for meditations or for prayers, affirmations? So for Halo, I love Halo because it's a, it's a Christian app for meditation. Well, no, it's not for meditation. It's for prayers. It's for prayers in general. But it includes the examen de conciencia, which I love. That's, that's like a form of meditation or mindful practice where at night you go back to your day. You think about the morning, afternoon, and evening. You go back to your day and you relive your day, but with a more conscious mind, more mindfully. And during that time, you explore to see where you felt the presence of God within you and where you need a little improvement. And, it, and then it helps you prepare for the next day because you, you have the awareness. It's, it's like literally like Groundhog Day, right? Like you repeat the day, you woke up and you went through your day, but you're mindful and you create awareness of, of where you were really awesome or where there's need for improvement. So they include examen de conciencia, they include silent prayer, and they guide you through it, which they tell you what to do in what moment. And then it gives you like the space of silence and then it, it um, prompts you again. So I love Halo, H-A-W, I mean, sorry, H-H-A-L-L-O-W. I love, um, I, haven't, I haven't used this one, but I've heard a lot about it, Calm. And um, what's the other one? Got to, can you think of it? Calm. And then YouTube videos for guided meditations. You can find all sorts of things. You could Google, let's say you're going, like you're feeling anxious, you could, you, you could Google a guided meditation for anxiety. If you're, feeling, if you're going through a divorce, you can Google like a, you know, meditation for divorce. But, I, but in terms of app, I feel that Halo is very complete for prayer. And, and I've heard good, really good things about Calm too. And I can, I can get you more. I have a, actually, Caro's core challenge in her on her website she has a whole list of resources for that any more questions anyone hi melissa thank you i needed this program it has helped me so much see i hold on what did she say i needed this program it has helped me so much through my grief my girl, her to hope. <laughs> I love you. And when does the next session start? October 7th. The Q free Q&A Tuesdays at noon. Thank you, Betsy. Seriously, wow, God uses people through the suffering as, as that's when they're the closest to him. Thank you for being a light. Thank you, Kalina. What kind words. Thank you. Thank you. Pain is a gift. Pain is a gift. And if we start seeing it as such, then we stop suffering. We, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine myself suffering again because even when I'm dying with a stomach virus, I'm thinking like, I'm dying. I'm feeling terrible. And I'm like, thank you, God, because I'm home. And I have a clean bathroom to go to. So, you know, you see life in a different light. Today, I, I, I was, I needed like a light. I listen to four books a month. And usually I'm not, I'm trying to learn, but I'm also looking for like more resources to recommend to my clients. But sometimes I need like a little break from all the, it's a lot of information constantly like coming in. So today I started listening to, <laughs> You can't make this up. And it's like this comedian and the guy is hilarious. And he's talking about his story. I was cracking up from the beginning. It's an audiobook. And he said, life is a story full of chapters. And the beauty of life is that not only do you get to choose how you interpret each chapter, which I'm really good about teaching in the program, how to interpret everything, but your interpretation writes the next chapter. It determines whether it's a comedy or tragedy, a fairy tale or horror story, rags to riches or riches to rags. 
You can't control the events that happen to you, but you can control your interpretation of them. So why not choose the story that serves life the best? You know what's funny? That I thought I had discovered all these things that I share in my online program. I'm like, I am so smart. Look at all these things that I, like, I came to realize and learn. And then when I read books, there's people that knew this 100 years ago or like 2,000 years ago. And here I am thinking that I'm so smart, right? But, but that's the beauty of pain and connecting with the inner wisdom that when you see that God led you to these answers on your own and you swore you discovered America, but then you read other people and you realize that God led them to this place and this place and everybody had pain in common. You're like, it has to be true. It just has to be true. Right, like I like he like his the title of his book. I can't make this up. The guy, oh my god, the guy is hilarious. Like, if you want to go for a laugh, that I think that's. I mean, I, I'm I'm only in the first chapter of the book, so I don't. I'm scared to recommend it, but it may be awesome. Hi, Lucia. I love seeing your face. <laughs> that's my best friend. Oh, that's your friend. Hi. Yes, it's Gato's friend. Thank you for having this. Um, it's my first time joining a call. So I'm really excited. Oh, I'm excited to have you. I'm excited I have a have question you. for you. So um, it's come up a lot recently with a couple of friends. Um, obviously, we're living in a very weird time with like everything virtual and stuff. But I noticed that um, I'm not alone in dealing with anxiety a lot. And it's like, sometimes I know where it's coming from and other times I don't. And I think um especially in college like we do it to ourselves like we I think we try to distract ourselves from it I guess like what advice do you have or is there something that you can like where where could you point us for like how to deal with these things and like when they do happen how do you know talk ourselves down if we don't have someone else to help us I think you would benefit from listening to the last webinar but I will, I, I'll still answer your question. The, so in this online program, the second lesson, the second module is about learning how to interpret life, right? Like how to interpret COVID, how to interpret the pandemic, the virtual experience, the fact that you can't go out without a mask. Like how, how, how do you wanna, how should we interpret life, events, experiences, what other people say and do to us? so that it serves us, right? So that it allows us to not live a life of anxiety. And events are neutral. COVID is neutral, death is neutral, money is neutral, everything is neutral. It's the meaning that we give, it, give to it that makes it positive or negative. So the way you are viewing life is causing the anxiety. It's not COVID, it's not the pandemic, it's not that we're virtual, it's not that you're home 24 seven and you're about to pull your hairs. It's, it's the story you're telling yourself about that. Because I also know plenty of other people that are like, my husband, oh, he's semi-retired, girl. He's like, what? I work from my walking closet. He works in the vanity. He works like an hour a day as opposed to eight. And he goes, works out. He gets massages. He cooks breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which has been amazing because I've been working a lot. And pandemic has been great. Like Zoom has been great. Like life is good. He's literally semi-retired. He's like happy as can be. But the way he's interpreted this experience has been different to yours, right? Like, and, and he has his family with him, which may drive him crazy too, but he chooses not to interpret it that way. Whereas you may have all your friends that you know, like all over the place and you may not be, have the same social ex experience that you, that you want and that you're used to. So how you interpret your reality is what causes your anxiety, which means you have the power to reprogram your interpretation, which is another clinical concept or tool called reframing. And I also teach it in the program. And, and to, to be able to feel differently. And another thing that has to do with anxiety is like I mentioned before, if you're living in the past, you become depressed because you're like, oh, you know, life wasn't what it was supposed to be. 
And if you're living in the future, like what's going to happen and how I'm going to do this and when am I going to see people and when is this going to end and am I going, am I going to get sick and am I going to get my mother or my grandma or my tia or my abuela sick? And like if, if you're worrying about the future, if you're resisting reality, if you're, if you're not living in the present moment, experience anxiety or depression. So you also have the opportunity to tap into your inner wisdom through meditation, mindful practices so that you can be relieved from that anxiety that you are, you're producing to yourself. So those two things I would say, like, like start interpreting life in a different way. And you could use affirmations, which is another tool to do that, which, you know, like when you, when you practice self-talk and you tell yourself what you want to believe, like, let's say you say like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous right now. Like you could be like, I'm feeling great. I've never been more at ease and peace. And like, you know, use emotion and just lie to your subconscious mind until you believe it. Because the truth is you, what you're living is the lie. The, the truth is what you're going to tell yourself, but you don't believe it. So you're going to think it's a lie. So lie to yourself. Tell yourself how peaceful and how at ease and how good it feels to be home and in Zoom and so that you can reprogram your mind and reinterpret or reframe the experiences that you're having. And every time that you find yourself nervous, literally, like whenever I'm like upset, the other night, the other day we were in the car, my husband and I, and we're getting somewhere late and he took the wrong exit or he took the, 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 the fast lane. So what's that called? The express lane. He took the, the express lane. And so then he couldn't exit through the exit that we were supposed to go out. And I was like, we're late and we're, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I can't change this. So I'm like, I need a moment to meditate. And the guy immediately went to turn off the radio, kind of like, let me let this woman do her thing so that she can calm down. And in that moment that I was like starting to get antsy and like frustrated and freaking out, I just, I closed my eyes and, and it was hard. It, it's hard when you're feeling that way. I, I, so I practiced my breathing and, and, I, and I practiced like the letting go of the thoughts. And by the time we got to the place, I was like, you know, happy go lucky, holding hands with him, everything, life is great. So, so practice, practice meditation, it is powerful. You may feel nothing is happening because you're like, oh, I'm here. And by the way, you don't have to do it perfectly. Like, I, I don't think I've ever had like an amazing meditation, like, cause I have so many things in my mind. Meditation is not to, to, for you to do it perfectly. It's the tool that's gonna help you to live a better life. And even if you have a shallow dive, you get wet. So, and you know, a dear friend of mine that may be a friend of yours too, taught me that when you, when you meditate, when you pray, when you go to the blessed sacrament, when you do all these things, you, it's like being, like being in the sun. You're getting sunburned, even though you don't feel it. You don't see the sun like darkening your skin. But when you get home, you're like, oh, I'm tanned or I'm burned, you know, and, and, and it happens. It happens even when you don't know it's happening. So keep on doing it. it. It will change your life. To me, that moment of stillness, solitude, and silence is, is the greatest gift. So there you go. That's her to hope in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you, Aguita. Ah, uh, good night. I think she already left, Rita. You guys are free to go in peace. You can go in peace. I, I don't take offense. I just want to stay here until the last question is asked to make sure I honor you and your time. But don't let me hold you back. I know it's almost 10. One more question. <laughs> Did you say that uh, you have another start date in January? Or was it another one in, is it November? No, it's October 7 and October 7, December 2nd. Uh, okay, so the first, I mean, the next one starts in October 7 and we have the block of six sessions. And then after that, we have December 2nd until January 6th. Until January 6th. Okay, and uh, that will be under the same price that you just mentioned, right? Or those, those two, yes. Yes, okay. perfect. Thank you. That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> ah, see, sí, Michelle.
Ah, she sent me a private message. I I, I remember you. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here. Sylvie, do you have any questions? Sylvie Corrales. No, Sylvie doesn't have any questions. Okay, guys. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Okay, guys, so I will see you Tuesday if you want to join again, and we'll have some more webinars coming up in the, the, at the end of November, at the end of November. So stay tuned. Go to Better With Betsy so you can follow me and be informed, and you can always sign up. Good night, Orguita. Everybody have a good night.